Hey everybody, welcome to the Bridge the Gap YouTube channel. We are going to be doing a live walkthrough today with one of my DFS buddies, uh, my buddy John, and he had some questions specifically to uh, navigating fantasy country using fantasy cruncher. Uh, we're going to focus on football today. So I've got um, the week 10 NFL stuff pulled up. I haven't done anything yet this week, and uh, John and I are going to attack it uh, with a fresh set of eyes and see what we can do to start helping you guys get a little bit more uh, comfortable with using everything to build lineups that you feel good about. John, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, John. I thank you for uh, doing this. I thank all of y'all at Bridge the Cat for what you're doing. I really feel like you guys are doing something that's not the norm, I guess, right now, but it's positive, very positive. So thank you for taking the time to do this. Yeah, my pleasure. It's um, it's something that it, it's fun for, for me to do. I, I love talking about DFS. Um, I think that, you know, when you can master a tool like Fantasy Cruncher, your ability as a DFS player um, just increases exponentially. You and I were talking a little bit before about, you know, if you're going to play in large tournaments without using a tool like this, you're, you're operating at a disadvantage. And I certainly agree with that. And I think that, um, you know, a tool like Fantasy Cruncher can be intimidating at first, but then once you start getting going, um, it, it's, it's, it's your best friend. I, I, I use it every day. Yeah, I agree. It was uh, the brief period of time that I've uh, started messing around with it. I was like, uh, you know, this thing is amazing. It, it always amazes me that people can – combine software coding and and statistics and metrics and come up with such a you know a great way to display all that stuff yeah dave and his team have done an awesome job so the first thing we're going to do is i'm just going to walk you through my my settings and this will be recorded so you can um, refer back to it so for football i always run three uniques now <laughs> that's going to be a matter of preference the more uniques you have, the more your lineup is going to vary lineup over lineup because it's going to create one lineup. The next lineup will have at least three pieces different. Mm -hmm. So I have some one of my buddies, Angel King. I think he likes four or five. Uh, Blaze Man likes four or five. I know other people that only run one or two. The second thing that I do for DraftKings, because it's full point PPR, I uncheck tight end. Mm -hmm. That's not... You can win with double tight ends. I just think it limits your upside. Again, this is a preference, so that's the second thing that I do. Okay. The third thing that I do is I go into position stacks, and I go into the limit rules, and I'm going to set three rules right now. So the first rule I'm going to set is I want to limit running backs to one from the same team. I don't want um, you know Royce Freeman and Philip Lindsay showing up in both my lineups. I want one or the right. other. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set the max number of players from the same team, any team, to two. So I don't want – even a team like the, the Chiefs when they're clicking on all cylinders with Pat Mahomes, it's still hard for Patrick Mahomes to support himself plus three teammates. Typically, it's going to be Pat Mahomes plus two teammates is the max. You know, there's mm -hmm. going to be the outlier games where everybody gets fed, but – that's going to be more of the uh, exception than the rule. Mm -hmm. The third rule that I set is I am going to limit all of the players in my player pool to one per team unless the game includes a quarterback from that game. So this is a scenario where I don't want Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler unless I'm playing a game that includes the Chargers and their opponent's quarterback. Okay. So is, is, is all this making sense so far? So the last one, you're, you're basically saying you don't want uh, running back, wide receiver, tight end without a quarterback or whatnot. Is that what you're – you don't want to – From either stack. team, yeah. So if uh, – okay, okay. So, so let's say we're, we're building a, um, a Packers game stack, and at that point I would be okay with Aaron Rodgers plus two of his teammates. But okay. I don't want – Aaron Jones and Devontae Adams showing up in my lineups without Aaron Rodgers or the opposing quarterback. Because if the game right. shoots out, that's where I'm okay with a quarterback plus two opponents kind of a thing. Right. Okay. So that's the that's the baseline that I set every single week for every single site. 
So what the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to change this to the main slate so we can just focus mm -hmm. on a certain amount of games. So mm -hmm. why don't you pick one of these games and then I will build a group for that game and show you how to build a group. Uh, let's go with, uh, let's go with, uh, KC. Okay, perfect. So what I'll do is I'll click, whoops, I'll, I'll remove all, and then I'll just highlight those two teams. So now we're going to be able to see everybody that's playing in this game. Mm -hmm. So the way that I like to build my groups is I like to sort by ceiling right here. Cause I really want to take a look at, you know, if this game shoots out, who's going to matter. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to unselect everybody here and let's build. Do you want to build for Pat Mahomes or do you want to build for Ryan Tannehill? Uh, Pat Mahomes. Okay. So we'll look at, so the first guy we'll select is Pat Mahomes. And so we look at this game. I always try to ask myself if this game gets to 30 points, who's going to matter? Does that make sense? All right. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So we know that Patrick Mahomes, we obviously went Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek, Patrick Mahomes and Kelsey. Now we have a scenario where Pat Mahomes is going to be priced up in salary. So we're going to need Pat Mahomes and multiple pass catchers here. So I would also include Sammy Watkins. And it looks like Damian Williams is re-solidifying himself as the lead back. So that's right. who I would select from the Chiefs side. Now on the Titans side, I'm not going to include Derrick Henry simply because I think that in a game like this where you are putting a running back in a group, so let's say we did include Derrick Henry. So now what we have to look at is, and even though the Chiefs struggle against opposing running backs, where if you wanted to have Derrick Henry in your group, I would be fine with that. But what we have to look at is, if we put Derrick Henry in our group at 6,400, we are sacrificing the opportunity to play any other running back potentially in that same price range. So mm -hmm. we could have a guy, so for instance, I know for a fact that Derrick Henry, I think is $300 more than Todd Gurley. So Todd Gurley has a, an absolute amazing matchup, and Sean McVay says he's going to get 30 touches. By putting Henry in our group, we're eliminating some of our opportunity to potentially play Todd Gurley, if that makes right. sense. Mm -hmm. So in this circumstance, I'm not going to include Derrick Henry. But on the Titans side, I want the high ceiling guys. So we know Corey Davis can go for 24 points. A.J. Brown, we know he can go for 24 points. And I think Delaney Walker may still be out. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to slide in Johnny Smith because mm -hmm. he's a, a cheaper price tight end. Now, I won't include tight ends always. But again, because we have a uh, scenario with Pat Mahomes being higher in salary, I wouldn't include somebody cheaper if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we've highlighted the guys that we want, we're going to go down to add selected to group, create new group. And now everybody we just clicked is in our group. Mm -hmm. So we're going to click this lock button for Patrick Mahomes. Now, a very popular strategy is a quarterback plus two from his team plus mm -hmm. one from the opposing team. Mm -hmm. And you need a lot to go right for that to happen. It's definitely viable. So if you like that, run it. But I like a quarterback plus two. So every single lineup that we're going to run is going to have Patrick Mahomes plus two people from this game. It might be two of his teammates. It might be one from the other side. Personally, I like leaving it open. But if you wanted to force it in, you could go to stacks. And you could create a rule where a quarterback must have a running back, a wide receiver, or tight end from his same team and from the opposing team. Or you could just do two players from the same game. It all accomplishes the same thing. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, are you good with that? Yeah. Okay, so now that we have our Patrick Mahomes game stack, let's go in and let's run a set of lineups. So let's just run 20 Patrick Mahomes lineups and see what we get. And it might take a second because I think, uh, whoops. So the other thing that you have to remember to do is 
So this is another thing that I do differently than most people is most people will set their groups and then they'll program this to run 150 lineups and then they'll just run 150 at a time. I don't really like that because I, I like implementing quality control more than that. So I actually mm -hmm. like uh, being able to um, hand select um, the quarterbacks and running them one at a time. So to get Fantasy Cruncher to do what we just did for our groups, you have to lock Patrick Mahomes. Right. And again, to, to remember why that is, just refer back to our key player. If key player is used, so th that's what's so great about Cruncher is it'll literally lay out everything for you. You can tell it exactly what you want it to do. Mm -hmm. um, I always label my groups, and you also want to make sure that, that you save. So that on Sunday or Saturday night or Sunday morning when you're building your lineups, everything's already there for you to cook. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've locked Mahomes. And let's see. What am I doing wrong? Oh. Oh, what am I doing wrong here? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't have her. My mistake. Okay, now we should be good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I only had the quarterbacks highlighted for some reason. All right, so now, now we're going to get our, our set of Patrick Mahomes. And as you see this popping up, take a look at what you're seeing and then we can make adjustments based off of what you like or dislike from what we're getting so for for football I usually pick seven quarterbacks Mm -hmm. and, I'll do, and that's how I'll come up with my 150. Uh, okay. So for this week, it'll be um, one quarterback at a time, and then I just build one at a time. So our quarterback, so I the, the, the first thing that I look at is I always look at what do my exposures look like. So quarterback, mm -hmm. obviously, we're going to have Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. Running back, I look at everybody on this list, and I ask myself, are these good football players? So <laughs> right. everybody on this list is a seemingly good football player. The only player that stands out is Ty Johnson. Mm -hmm. So the Lions have really struggled to run the ball. So I look at Ty Johnson. And so what I just did, if you click the, the, the magnifying glass, it's going to show you all of your Ty Johnson lineups. So when I see a player like Ty Johnson popping up into my lineup, I'm asking myself, well, is he there because he's cheap? And we can see that he's got a $4,100 salary. So he is cheap. So then right. I'll ask myself, okay, is he – and this is going back to what we were talking about before the call is good chalk or bad chalk or whatever. Right. So I don't know what Ty Johnson is going to be owned at this week, but I think that if we're looking at a scenario where he's the lead back, people might see, oh, I can get a lead running back for 4100 But then if we if you click on his name, it's going to show you uh, – it's going to show us his game log. Mm -hmm. He hasn't done anything, you know, and he's playing Chicago, which is arguably one of the best defenses in the league. Right. So even though he's cheap, I can't really foresee a scenario where he gets to his ceiling. Mm -hmm. So I'm not feeling great about Ty Johnson. So knowing that, we'll go back to a running back pool. Everybody else I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with. I know Le'Veon may or may not play. He's got a great matchup. His price keeps going down. I would be fine with that. Now, here's something mm -hmm. I do like is we're organically getting Derrick Henry. Now, if I'm mm -hmm. going to have a running back in my game stack, I like it if he shows up organically. Right. So now we have a scenario. We have Mahomes plus Kelsey plus Brown plus Derrick Henry. So now we, mm -hmm. can ask, we, can, we can walk through a scenario where we say, okay, let's say the Titans get up early and A.J. Brown just goes nuts in the second half. Well, A.J. Brown, we can check him. He's done his job. Well, what's going to happen in the second half? Mahomes and Kelsey are going to be playing catch up, and Kansas City is going to be trying, or Tennessee is going to be trying to milk the clock. Mm -hmm. And then we have another combination at over here with Sammy instead of Kelsey. I'm good with that. I'm good with mm -hmm. that. Uh, but that's if if you're going to have a running back show up in your game stack, 
Um, I am always going to want to have the running back get there organically, unless it's like Barkley or McCaffrey, where they're super involved in the pass game. Right. Or, or like Damian Williams for this for this matter. Um, going through our wide receivers, I always like going to the bottom first and then work my way up. Um, the only guy that I really don't love in this scenario is Adam Humphreys. Mm-hmm. But because he's a part of this game stop, I, I would leave him. But if it's Adam Humphreys outside of Mahomes or Tannehill, I would probably kick him out of my group or out of my mm-hmm. group. Mm-hmm. Everyone else I'm okay with here, Christian Kirk. Um, he's probably cheap. That's probably why he's showing up. Yeah, 5,200. That's, that's, that's actually not as cheap as it could be. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on this Christian, this Christian Kirk um, exposure. Tight ends. Um, everything's okay here. I don't really love uh, Jacecki, but he is getting involved more. Um, Doyle's always going to show up because he's cheap. But if you look at Doyle, his he doesn't like the last time he went for twenty points is halfway through last year, so over a year that he's gone through twenty points. Right. So these are the types of players that I'm going to be monitoring. Where I'm like, you know what? I don't really like this guy's ceiling. We know what Kelsey's ceiling is. If you look at Olsen. We see two games where Olsen got over 20 points this year. Mm-hmm. You know, if we look at Jacecki, again, he hasn't been doing that great, but, you know, he almost got to 100 yards last week. Mm-hmm. And then uh, let's see. And he's 3,100. So I, I, I would be fine with that. Defenses, here's something that I don't love is I'm probably not going to have 90% of the Browns' defense. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I mean, the Bills aren't that, you know, offensively. They're not Bad. a powerful <laughs> offense, yeah. But in in you know, in, in Josh Allen could turn it over, but I don't want. And, and they're cheap, but I I just want to feel that that comfortable. So uh, right. With that said, so what I would do is I would close this out. I'd go back to Ty Johnson, and I'd just take him out of my player pool, just uncheck right. him. Mm-hmm. For defenses, you know what? I'm probably just going to put a global cap on defenses. Let's just say twenty five percent. Right. We don't want any more than that. And then tight ends. Let's just leave tight end alone for now and rerun that 20. Now, before we rerun it, are, are, do you like playing game stacks? Are you comfortable with that? I didn't. I, I just hopped right into it. I didn't want to assume that that's what you've been doing. Yeah, absolutely. That's okay. exactly what I've okay. been doing. Okay. So. so with that in mind, let's build another 20 and see what we get this time. So this is the preliminary stuff of what I'm doing to um, just get through our our builds and just make sure that I get a feel for what the week is putting out. And then I'll start mm-hmm. going through and I'll start making some manual adjustments and I'll show you how to do that next. Okay. And I'll typically do two to three runs just to try to get some of the scrubs out. And then if you know a scrubbier guy is showing up, I'll, I'll do more manual adjusting. Okay, so now we go back to running back pool. Now we're starting to get um, a guy like Kalen Balaj. He's the only starting running back in Miami. He's under four thousand. So now he's 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 totally sucked also. But <laughs> I I think at his three hundred dollar price point, and Ty Johnson was showing up in five of our lineups. We only have one with Balaj. Mm-hmm. And then, but look what it gives us. What it, look what it allows us to do. It allows us to get up to Thomas, up to Goodwin. But I, I just these these lineups are pretty crappy still. Like this is not. <laughs> a, I mean, where's our firepower coming from? You know, we have Godwin, Thomas, Kelsey, and then you know we're we're basically hoping for for some ceiling games. We don't really have any good players, as many good players as I'd like to see. So right. that's that's what we're going to adjust next. So let's just let's just browse through our our, our like look at this. Look at this player pool. Where are the studs? We have two. We have Thomas and Godwin. Everyone else is just a guy. Now, a lot of that's going to come from Kelsey being an expensive tight end. Mm-hmm. So that, that's, that's going to be part of the issue. So what I'd like to do at this point is I'm not getting any studs. So let's go to running back. Let's sort by regular projections. We just ran some lineups. We got no McCaffrey, no Barkley, no Kamara, right? So what we can do to start getting some of these guys is let's put in their ceilings for their projection. Mm-hmm. 
now we're telling the computer that we want our foundation to be these guys that have the high ceiling, the studly players. Mm -hmm. So we were already getting some Thomas, Mike Evans. Look at, I mean, look at Mike Evans' matchup. The Cardinals can't stop anything. <laughs> so we're going to get some Michael Thomas. Uh, we're going to increase Thomas' ceiling so that he stays in there. Uh, Godwin, yeah, if we like Evans, we got to like Godwin. Cooper Cup, that's a decent price for Cup. We'll bump him. Devontae Adams, definitely want Devontae Adams this week. It's only a matter of time before he bounces back. We right. love Tyreek. Tyreek can always go for big numbers. 35. Julio, 35-4. And after that is where we're starting getting into – these. a lot of these guys are, are considered studly, but I, I – you know, start looking at the matchups. It's like, all right, well, tougher matchup here. You know, Allen Robinson's quarterback is whatever. I will bump up Beckham just because 6,100 is insanely low for Beckham. So this he's complaining is, about not getting the ball too. So. And, he's, he, and, this, and this is this is the crazy thing. This is sometimes people will be like, dude, you were a hundred percent on that guy. Why were you a hundred percent on that guy? It's like, all right, we'll have Odell Beckham Jr. and let's try to find the last time he was 6,100. It's been a while. Long time. Has to be a long time. Week 12 of his rookie season. Yeah. <laughs> so don't be surprised if I have 100% Odell Beckham this week. <laughs> right. Just some of these guys, and it like, I, I, I touched on this a couple weeks ago with Tyler Boyd. He's not a stud, but sometimes these guys just get too cheap. And the way that I play with a tighter core and taking stands on guys. I just don't care. You know, it's just like, you right, know what? Right. If this guy does anything, I'm going to have more of him. And let's take a look. Um, to look at his – I don't know if you have FC Pro, but with FC Pro you can see the ownership projections. So we have Beckham who is at his lowest salary since his rookie year, and he's going to be projected under 10%. Right. So if I locked Odell Beckham, I'm going to out leverage the field almost by, you know, 12 10, 12, 15 times what the field's going to have. Right. So I want to try to get these guys in my lineups organically. I don't really like locking a guy, but I can already mm -hmm. tell you without having done any research, this is the first time I'm looking at this week's slate, that mm -hmm. this is a guy that I may irrationally <laughs> just have in every <laughs> single lineup. Um, you know, another guy that's a little too cheap, it looks like Juju's a little too cheap with um, a matchup. The Rams are seemingly... Uh, a tough matchup, especially now that they have Ramsey, but um, Juju moves all over, so I don't think Ramsey's mm -hmm. going to shadow him. Um, he hasn't been great, but his targets are still okay. So I'm going to bump Juju just because we have another guy who's under six six thousand, and you start looking at well, who is he in the same category with? It's like one of these things is not like the other. Juju, Christian Kirk, more Marvin Jones, John Brown. Juju is mm -hmm. a far superior play. Like, the fact that John Brown costs more than Juju, like that just doesn't make sense to me. So right. this, this is another guy that if I have an irrational amount of this week, I know Mason Rudolph isn't a very good quarterback, I would just be fine with it. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at our tight ends. Last week we had a tight end opportunity with Zach Ertz where his salary was just way, way too low, and I totally right. missed it. So that's one of the things I want to try to look at this week. Is there anybody here that is um, way too cheap? And the other thing, too, to look at that always catches my eye of which guys to, like, you know, potentially go in on a little bit more are any of these guys where their salaries are down. Mm -hmm. So when everybody's going to be chasing these guys at top, I'm going to try to make my money right here with these these guys that are in the stud category, but their salaries are down. Okay. And then I love, absolutely love a guy like Beckham where his salary could not be any lower. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> like, this guy's salary, his salary is 2000 less than – than where it was. And this comes back to the conversation where you hear people talk about DFS isn't about knowing the sport. It's about playing the game. So we're putting pieces of the puzzle together and we're mm -hmm. potentially getting a guy like Odell Beckham who can drop 40 points on anybody, any given week at a basement low salary. So mm -hmm. when you're, when you're, when you're talking about chalk or contrarian, now let's go and uh, let's take a look at, uh, I'll show you how to, combine that to where you can have both so right now it's telling us that michael thomas will be the most owned player on the slate so if 
Michael Thomas is going to be 30% of the lineups. What can we do with our pieces around Michael Thomas so that we're going to be different? So some people say, oh, well, 30% Michael Thomas, I'm not going to play him. That's too much. And right. I think the right answer is, okay, well, what can we do with Michael Thomas to make his um, appearance in our lineups different? Well, now let's say – let's go back to our, our value column. So let's say we're going to play Michael Thomas. Well, now we can get some really good – uh, diversity in some uni- unique lineups when we start all of a sudden our three wide receivers are Michael Thomas, Odell Beckham, and Juju. Now we have three guys with 40-point ceilings, and two of them are priced well below where they started being in the year. One of them is at an all-time low. Mm-hmm. So let's, with that in mind, a tight end, I'm just going to circle back. It looks like the only guy um, that should be on our radar that whose price is down is Kelsey. So looking at his price where he's down, so you start out at 71. So 6,400 is the lowest he's been all year. That is another thing that is a buy signal for me. So if I see a guy with the lowest price that he's been all year, this might be a week where I have Kelsey in 100% of my lineups just pay up a tight end. Mm-hmm. With tight end being right. so ugly, it's like, do I want to trust Kelsey or do I hope you know any of these guys that are kind of like in the you know four to five target category a game get me to where I get there? Right. So now that we've – Looked at our our guys to get some better players in there. Let's 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 run some lineups and see see what we get. So I can already see these lineups look way, way better. Right, yeah. Like there are some really good football players in these lineups now. Because I think sometimes with with um, DFS, especially for a sport like football, it's really easy to overthink it and say, oh, I just want a lineup full of good values. Well, it's like good values don't pay the bills, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, production is what pays the bills, and we need guys that that can produce and when they produce, they can produce in bunches. So that's right. that's really what we're what we're doing and making some manual adjustments with the players. So now we're we're not forcing in better players. What we're doing is we're adjusting for if they have a ceiling game and then letting Fantasy Cruncher do what it does best. Because the way that Fantasy Cruncher is going to build the lineups is going to be based off of the player's value and how it corresponds to their um, their salary. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, we're going to get a lot of Travis Kelsey because our ceiling projection is putting him at four and a half times his salary, which is far superior than anybody else at the tight end position. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So going back to our build, now let's cycle through and take a look at. So we know that we're paying up potentially a wide receiver. So this, all this stuff is going to be a mess. So we're going to have to fix this in a second. Mm -hmm. So let's go to our wide receiver pool, see how that looks. Look at this, much, much better, much, much better. Mm -hmm. We have a a lot of studs here at the top, and we start getting into some of these value guys, and we can can sort through those pretty easily. And then we have 100% Kelsey. So these lineups are looking a lot more powerful, especially one like this. You know, we have uh, a game stack where we're a little bit different with Mahomes and Damian Williams. I think Damian Williams still might be a little undervalued because people don't know whether or not they can trust him. And, oh, he had a 90-yard touchdown run last week. So is that, you know, a fluke or not? Um, But all of these guys have really high ceilings. Our core of guys with this lineup have really high ceilings. And now if you have to take a, 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 a flyer cheap running back, I'd rather have it in this scenario versus what we were seeing in the other where we didn't have any firepower to our lineups. Even right. a lineup like this with Kareem Hunt, it's like, okay, you know, he's the backup running back, but he's 3,000 salary. Yeah. You know, we might be able to luck box into a scenario where maybe Nick Chubb gets dinged up early and all of a sudden we have a guy at minimum salary with, you know, almost 40 point potential. Mm-hmm. This is the firepower that we want in our lineups. Now, some of these jabronis in here, I would get, I would clear out a lot of the, the player pool. So let's let's do that. Let's go through um, our running back pool, and 
see if we can negotiate a little bit more. So what I typically, let's, let's go back to our ceilings. I always like looking at ceiling because to win tournaments, we need ceiling games from, from right. these guys. So going through this list, everybody here on this first page is 100% somebody maybe outside of Jamal Williams that could have a ceiling game, but he's actually pretty involved in the passing game. So I'm, I'm fine with him at 5,200. I would be fine with that. We start going down. Um, if Kamara's back, we don't really need a 7,300 uh, Latavius. Mm -hmm. Most of these guys I'm okay with. So Dion Lewis is probably where I'm going to have my cutoff. Even mm -hmm. though we're building for game stacks, he's just not that involved. If you look at his carries, the most carries he's got is four. You know, some people might say, oh, he's involved in the passing game, but five receptions for 33 yards, that's not going to do anything for us. We need we need every player in our lineup to have a twenty five, you know, a twenty to thirty point ceiling. Mm -hmm. So we can just take click some of these guys out. Belil Powell, I'm gonna leave him just because we might get a free square with Belil Powell if Le'Veon Bell's out. Right. Because he'll be the starting back. Uh Naheem Hines is pretty much just a better version of Deion Lewis. If we look at his game log, it's gonna be almost identical. F four carries. You know, even this game where he caught six passes, ten and a half points, it doesn't do anything for us. Mm -hmm. So these are the guys I'm going to clear out. Um, JD McKissick has been getting a little bit more run with Detroit, but it's like, all right, if he doesn't score that touchdown, how involved is he in the passing game? For a running back, I would typically want to see something in the seven or more target uh, category. This four targets, all this tells me is that they couldn't run the ball and they were playing from behind, is which is exactly what we saw last week with Oakland. In a scenario where they're playing against Chicago, those those numbers potentially going to be a lot more challenging to come by. So all these guys, I'm just going to take out of my player pool. I don't really want anything to do with with most of these guys. Yeah, now we're really into some scrub territory. So I'm just going to I'm just going to unselect all of these guys. And another thing that you can do is um, you can set a minimum. If you go to back to our general settings. Mm -hmm. So let's say, um, let me see. So minimum projection included in the calculation, I'm just going to set this to seven. Mm -hmm. So that way we can just get, uh, um, get a lot of these guys out of our player pool. All right, so let's run, um, let's run the 20 and see if we're still getting some of these scrubby running backs. And every time we make adjustments like this, it's going to condense our, our core, which I like. Mm -hmm. I like being mm -hmm. able to take stands. You know, I don't like being too spread out. I right. like if my guys, because so here's the unique benefit of like, you know, a scenario where if let's say we were getting a lot of Odell Beckham, it's like, I already know like what I need for, for things to, to go well. If Odell Beckham does really well, I'm going to be able to have, you know, an awesome, an awesome day. Every time Odell Beckham does anything, it's going to move the needle significantly for me. And that's the other thing, too, that you have to decide is where do I want to make sacrifices? I think a lot of times when play players come into playing DFS, they play in 10-team season-long leagues where you're strong yeah. everywhere. But uh, DFS, especially on a site like DraftKings, uh, it's going to play more like a 12-team league where you're going to have to make sacrifices somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, starting to look at, I'm going to just take a look at our running back pool. Ty Johnson showing up again. So, um, I would just make some manual adjustments on some of this stuff. I would go back and take him out of the pool. I don't want to go back and do something that we just did. Um, but are you seeing how some of this, just with a few minor tweaks, you can start getting some lineups that you feel a lot better about? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Without a doubt. All right, cool. <laughs> Um, so let's do another team, but before we do, do you have any questions about navigating or specific to what's going on with, um, what the computer's doing or anything on this end in the advanced settings, anything like that? Uh, yeah, I do have a question in the advanced options area. Um, and it's more, I guess the, uh, down a little bit further, the randomness, I believe okay. setting. Yep. Um, I kind of tweaked with that a little bit last time I was experimenting, I guess. I, I don't know really, I guess I don't really quite understand what it does or if okay. it's beneficial to adjust it or what would be a 
positive percentage to set it on or anything like that so okay so that's a great question so for randomness there's two types of randomness if you have fc pro so classic randomness is just going to give you a random range of outcomes so mm -hmm. if you're if you're using classic you probably would set this to uh 10 percent now the new randomness that they call it is actually normal distribution, and they're mm. going to use the standard deviations. So this would I would probably set to like twenty-five to forty. If you have FC Pro, I would recommend using the normal distribution based off the standard deviations. So at that point, what it's going to do is let's take a player like Saquon Barkley here, mm -hmm. and we are telling the computer he has a baseline projection of twenty-three point six one. Okay. His standard deviation is 9.2. Mm -hmm. So anytime Barkley shows up in our lineup, it's going to run the standard deviations. So it's going to be his regular projection, then his projection plus 9, and then his projection minus 9. So, you're okay. gonna get every, so anytime it's Barkley at his normal or Barkley plus 9, he's going to show up. Anytime the computer gets Barkley minus 9, he's not going to be a good enough value to show up. Okay. So really what, and this is, I prefer just using uniques and no randomness. Right. What randomness is going to do is it's just going to open up your lineups to get you on some lower owned players. Okay. And what we've done is we've gone through and we've decided, hey, I see a guy like Odell Beckham that I think is way too cheap. So we're just manually having more input on what we are going to do to get our lower owned players. Right. Okay. Because I always want to make sure that I have good football players in my lineups guys that have at least 20 point ceilings 15 at a minimum and then at that point uh, making sure that um, you know I DFS at its core is a math problem and the way to solve the math problem for football is you got to hit on your game stack first and then you got to hit on your um, your, your one-offs you know and you, and you want a core of players so if your core goes off you're gonna have a big day and so if we look at this is the thing that I always look at before I submit my lineups on, on DraftKings is I, I just go through and I look at my core. If these, your core, when I say core, when I refer to core, if you look at this um, breakdown right here, it's going to be 10 players. So if you count these, it'd be 10 players. So I look at these 10 players that I have and I'm like, if, if my core, if I have, you know, six to 10 of these guys go off, number one, can I see that happening? And if they go off, what's, what's the likelihood? So we go through this and it's like, okay, we know that all five of these guys can have a big game. Six guys can have a big game. Running back, we need to work on this some here. And then having defenses. The only reason defenses are showing up right now is because we've only built for one team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I always am focused on whatever sport I'm playing, I'm focused on what this looks like. Is there enough firepower here that if these guys have big games, number one, can they have big games? And what's the likelihood of it? Because you don't want to go, you don't want to like the, the, it's so funny like that, that you don't want to take a knife to a gunfight. And that's what, right. <laughs> that's what a lot of DFS players do is they outthink themselves or they're too afraid to think for themselves. And you just got to take what the slate gives you. And a lot of players don't understand that. And that's what, that's what jams them up. So let's, let's mm -hmm. pick another game to build a stack for and, and then see what those lineups look like. You want to do like a Baltimore? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, okay. Yeah. This is a good one because Lamar Jackson's kind of um, uh, Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen building around them is a little bit different than, than other, mm -hmm. other quarterbacks because they rely so much on their legs. So do you want to build on the Dalton side or do you want to build on the Lamar side? Uh, let's do Dalton. Okay. Well, well, actually, I Dalton's, guess it's not Dalton. Yeah, so it's weekend, Finley. It? Okay, so, so we, we definitely want to do Lamar. Then. No, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, so with Finley, if they weren't playing the Ravens, I would have interest in Philly, Finley because right. he's so cheap. Like yeah. last week, one of my yeah. favorite quarterbacks was Fitzpatrick, and right. it was because he had a you know great matchup against a bad team. All right, so we'll go with Lamar. So we know in the passing game that Lamar has two options. Ninety percent of his targets are going to two targets, and that's going to be Brown and Andrews. Um, mm -hmm. even if we did, so let's like take a guy like Willie Sneed. And again, this is where the ceiling is going to come into play. Just look how involved he is. He hasn't got to 15 points once, you know, it's been quite a while since he's done that. 
Now, could he do it this week against a terrible Bengals team? Of course he can. But I think we're going to burn through more money chasing the ceiling games from average players than just trying to get, you know, Hollywood Brown's a good player. Let's just get mm-hmm. him in our lineup in, you know, his 34-point upside. You know, Hollywood Brown hasn't done anything in a while, and that's now reflected in his ownership. Awesome. Cool. I like that. 5,100, mm-hmm. you know, that's almost 1,000 down from his high. This is great. You know, this is a buy low opportunity for us. So for Lamar, that's all I put in on the Lamar side. Bengals are a pretty straightforward team. A.J. Green is supposed to be back this week. Tyler Boyd, we know with a newer quarterback, he's, it's probably going to be very vanilla. So I would imagine he's probably going to funnel a lot of targets to those two guys. Eifert mm-hmm. isn't a stud tight end, so I wouldn't put him in my group. Um, the running backs, even though you can make the argument, Lamar Jackson, if Lamar Jackson gets in the red zone, Mark Ingram's going to stand to benefit. But I just think that we got to come back to our – our opportunity cost um, scenario that we were talking about earlier with Derrick Henry. You know, we have a running back here in Ingram who's now priced up $1,200 from last week. He does have good ownership, but $7,100 is not cheap. So if Mark Mm -hmm. Ingram is truly a good play, I would prefer to have him get into my group organically. And then I don't see anything else that I like on the, on either side. Auden Tate, I, I, I don't know if he's viable now that A.J. Green's back. And then Alex mm-hmm. Erickson, if we take out um, you know, his touchdown from this game, it's okay, but I, I don't know if I trust three targets from Ryan Finley. Right, yeah. So this would be my group. And again, I like quarterback plus two, so it would be Lamar Jackson plus two of these guys. So, um, And I, I like games like this because you know – DFS can get more challenging when you have a guy like Aaron Rodgers that can spread it out to five different guys. Right, yeah. Here we have a game stack with two teams that funnel their targets. Uh, Lamar Jackson's a little bit on the chalkier side this week. Fifteen, Anything over 10% is going to be chalky for a quarterback. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. All that means is now we have to get a little bit different with who we put around Lamar. Mm -hmm. So we'll go back. To our builds and we've already manly adjusted some of the studs that we want and we're going to lock Lamar and let's see what we get I mean I'm liking these lineups Yeah. you know I mean you see a guy you know, we already talked about Balage over here. We have a guy like Demarius, and it's like, you know what? I don't love him, but the guy just keeps getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. You know, he's had some games where he's had opportunity, like this game right here, nine targets. So mm-hmm. it's not like he's just standing on the field like Willie Sneed. He's actually involved. This guy was, you know, injured, but this is a guy who not too long ago, 24 and a half points. You know, we saw what he did with Peyton Manning. So. It's a guy I wouldn't want in 100% of my lineups, but if he pops up in one of these one-offs that allows me to get to Barkley plus Godwin plus Cup plus my game stack, like I'm willing to make a sacrifice there. Right. So, you know, we've got Ty Johnson, some of these – and again, like some of these crappier guys are, are going to keep showing up. So I want to just pull them out again. I, I, I got a little too um, loose with um, – some of the running backs, but I want to pull them out just to show you what a Lamar Jackson build would look like for me. So I'm going to tinker with this one until it's the way that I would have it. So Peyton Barber, high flying offense, easy opponent. It's just not involved enough. Mm -hmm. Even if you look at a guy like Damian Williams, you know, the writing was on the wall for a big week last week. His salary was cheaper than it had been all year. And the week before, he's getting some work. He's not getting passing game work. But if we look here at the 7 for 30 and a touchdown, that touchdown was within the 5. So he's getting goal line work. Okay. Right. So that's in a, between his cheap price, his high-powered offense, and goal line work, that's enough to put a guy like Damian Williams in last week versus a guy like Peyton Barber this week. We already know mm-hmm. we don't want McKissick. 
Uh, we don't want the back, the third string running back. Trey Edmonds, I'm going to leave highlighted for now because if James Conner is out again, uh, he was the foundational running back for the Steelers. He's still mm-hmm. pretty cheap. Um, and everyone's going to remember that Jalen Samuels caught 13 passes, but I think it's going to be easy to forget that he got 12. He got the bulk of the groundwork. Right. And again, it's a tougher matchup, but if a guy's cheap, I don't really pay too much attention to the matchup. Right. Because these guys are still, the, you know, some of the best and the best in the world at their profession, you know? Yep. All right. So all these other guys are going to be under seven points, so they should automatically be excluded. So let's run this again and see what our running back pool looks like with getting some of those scrubby guys out. And are, is this helping you get a better feel for... Yeah, absolutely. It definitely is. Is this what you're hoping to accomplish? Yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. So, yeah, as I'm building quarterback by quarterback, the only thing that's really going to change is these guys that are tied into the quarterback. All of my fill-ins, my core, my Schusters, my Beckhams, my Godwins... The, that's going to be pretty similar build over build. I just want good football players. I don't ha- care who they're playing. I just want good football players in my lineups. So right. now look at this running back pool. Like I can live with this running back pool. We have a stud. We have a guy coming off of a suspension who's at a basement. We have a guy who's thrown into the starting role against you know um, a tougher defense, but it's in Indianapolis on the dome in a dome on the turf. Uh, mix in his salary keeps decreasing with AJ Greenback. Maybe that helps, or maybe they rely on him a little bit more with Finley there. Uh, we saw mm-hmm. Montgomery do it two weeks ago. Damian Williams, Tariq Cohen, Devin Singletary. All of these guys are either super cheap or they have good ceilings, mm-hmm. which allows us to get to all of our studs in our wide receiver core. And we don't have any scrubs sneaking in other than Alan Hearns. Cole Beasley's tricky because, you know, he'll score a touchdown. But he, the, I think the last ceiling game he had was once last year where he scored two touchdowns. Right. Uh, yeah, this one right here. He had two last year. So he does have that, that, that higher ceiling upside. He's only showing up in one lineup, so I'd probably be fine with that. Again, we'll just click and see what does it allow us to do. So Beasley in allows us to get Kamara plus Evans plus Adams. Uh, I just – I would probably – I don't love it. Let's let's look again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if 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 it were down here, still, if you're still getting double digit target targets, I'd be fine with it. But why is he only getting two targets? Yeah, you know, I just don't know if there's enough volume for him. If he were thirty one hundred, that'd be different. But at forty one hundred, <sighs> you know, right. is he getting to twenty points this week? I don't, I, I I don't see it. So, I'd probably take Beasley out. I'd obviously take Alan Hearns out. Um, you know, he hasn't been relevant in a few years. And then everyone else on this list, I'm fine with tight end. Um, we, we've covered all these guys. We're good with all those guys. So I would only take out. So let's go to our wide receivers. Let's start getting rid of some of these scrubs. So that I wanted you to be able to see what I would consider um, a scrub or not. Because some of these guys like Danny Amendola and Adam Humphreys, and even a guy like Chester Rogers with T.Y. Hilton out, just there's no ceiling. He's yeah, gonna, he's going to score yeah. a touchdown, but you know, ten points doesn't win us tournaments. Mm-hmm. So, I know Danny Amendola had a down game last week, but I, I, I'm I'm pretty encouraged by what he did weeks before. I don't know. I don't love forty seven hundred, but I, I would leave him just because we've seen you know twice already. He he's got over twenty points, so I would mm-hmm. I would leave him. Adam Humphreys is another guy, unless he's in my Kansas City. Or Titans game stacks. I'm I'm, I'm just going to take him out. So I don't want any of these guys. Ted Ginn. Like that's the thing is, would you rather have Danny Amendola at 4700 with Matt Stafford as quarterback at Chicago, or Ted Ginn at home versus one of the worst defenses, a thousand dollars cheaper, Drew Brees as his quarterback, and oh by the way, this guy's shown that he can get over 20, 30 points numerous times in his career. Right. And look at look at his ownership. You know, mm-hmm. very low. Uh, Taylor Gabriel, he's done enough to 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 be there. Um, James Washington, yeah, I'm fine with a lot of these guys. Albert Wilson, you know, I think Albert Wilson, you know, he had two big games last year, nothing since. MVS, I'm fine with. Paris Campbell, I think, you know, when we have an opportunity with some of these rookies, I mean, that's a pretty encouraging stat line in his first game back, um, and that did come with Hoyer, but he's cheap enough to to give him another shot. 
Mm-hmm. This is a guy that might be chalkier this week with Cooks out, Josh Reynolds. So this Josh Reynolds and Bilal Powell might just be free squares this week. Just lock them right. in because they're too cheap. I don't want Alan Hearns. I don't want Lazard. I mean, Jakeem Grant is a burner, but he hasn't done anything. So I and some of these guys, it might be to my own detriment that I'm taking them out of the player pool. But it's like you know what, prove it, and then you can make my player pool. So that's everybody <laughs> under seven points. So let's run another set and see what we get. So at this point, the lineups that we're now building are the lineups that I would probably submit as actual lineups now that I've cleaned out a lot of the crap that I don't want in there. And I think a lot of the times when I talk about players overthinking it is when we can talk ourselves into, oh, well, this is the game that you know Adam Humphreys has a ceiling game and it's like yeah but you said that last week and the week before and the week before it's like yeah but this is the week it's like all right well you're gonna lose so much more money you know the 19 weeks chasing that one game than you are the week that he that he does that he comes through right right so everybody here in the running back pool I'm fine with they're either cheap or heavily involved in their offense I'm fine with that wide receiver same thing everybody in this lineup's a good football player or they're cheap Tight end, same thing. I don't love Doyle. I don't love Jacecki, but we're only getting one or two of them. It's not mm-hmm. going to affect us. So if you start scrolling through, and one of the things – I don't do it so much anymore because I, I have a pretty good feel for what I want my builds to look at. But I start going through, and I'll just ask myself, you know, is this – could I see this lineup or that lineup um, being something that wins? Now, it's interesting. We did not put Mixon into our group. So Mixon is not in our group, but he's showing up organically. Mm-hmm. And typically, I don't love running backs against you know a good defense like Baltimore. But again, when the salary's so cheap, who cares? You know, we mm-hmm. have another scenario mm-hmm. here with Mixon down two thousand from where he started this year. Mixon's pretty much free from the where you st- for for so uh, again let's scroll back to the last time Mixon was 4700 <laughs> week 12 of his rookie year so it's just yeah, like so. It's just crazy like some of the market overreactions and then if we go up to Mixon six and a half percent this week right <laughs> so this is you could play every single you could play the three chalkiest guys like let's say you're you're gonna have a lineup with Michael Thomas, Godwin, and Kamara in every single lineup. You could do that and still be way different by just doing a little bit of research that no one else is looking at. Right. You know, when other people, if you see a guy like Mixon and your first reaction to him is like, ugh, most people, that's all they're going to do. They're going to say, ugh, and they're going to move on. Uh, and yeah, yeah. and we, can, we can combat that by looking at it and saying, wait a second. I know this guy is like suck, but man, I, like he's so freaking cheap. Like, I'm just for shits and giggles. Let's look at the running backs that are in the same range as him. Okay, so again, <laughs> playing our one of these things is not like the other game. Gus Edwards, Malcolm Brown, Hines, McCoy, Walton, Ronald Jones, McKissick. All these guys are backups, and we have a bona fide uh, like like Joe Mixon went in the first or second round of your fantasy draft. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not even close. <laughs> and here oh, he man. is with a bunch of dudes on your waiver wire. So yeah. <laughs> these are scenarios where, again, like I haven't done any research, and you know, this is a a a team that you know in Baltimore that if we go and we look and we can see, you know, just a few weeks ago against a divisional opponent what Nick Chubb did versus him, you know, as crappy as the Bengals are, they're one of three teams that knows the Ravens better than any other team in the league. Right. Yeah. Mixon is involved in the passing game. 4,700. I mean, that's, don't be surprised if I have a lot of Beckham and a lot of Mixon this week. <laughs> Juju. So that's pretty much how I build for NFL. And I take my stands and if the guys flop, you know, I'm okay with it, but I, cause I know I'm getting these guys at just basement, basement bottom. Um, right prices so uh, are you good or you want to do another game stack and builds how, how you know I, I i think i'm pretty good uh john i'd i'd like to you know hear when i after we get off this call probably mess around with it a little bit myself because you've been able to 
I mean, you're kind of just uncovering stuff here. You know what I mean? It's just uh, very eye-opening. Well, I think so much about DFS, having success at DFS, is just applying common sense to DFS when it's not so common anymore. And just playing detective. You know, the one thing I ask myself every every slate is, what can I see here or what am I seeing that no one else is seeing? You know, how many guys did we just look at in the last half hour or so that – most people are just going to grossly overlook just because mm-hmm. they see the guy, oh, I don't want to play this guy. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it, it, Like I said, it's already I've, I've learned a lot, a whole lot in this phone call. So Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you making the time. I appreciate you having good questions. I think this is going to be really helpful to a lot of people. Um, email is always the best way to get in touch with me, so if you think of anything – after our call, just let me know. I appreciate everybody that is checking this out. Fantasy Cruncher is an amazing product. I use it every single day. Uh, and, John, I hope you feel a lot more empowered in your journey to becoming a tournament player with what you learned today. I do. Thank you very much, John. Thank you for taking the time. My pleasure, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. All righty. I'll talk to you soon.